Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back. Today's video is on a weapon that on the surface, you could dismiss it. It's a tough one to get, it comes from World Drops, you can also get it from the Crypt Dark. The 390 RPM Pulse Rifle to me is in the middle of the road. It's a good base weapon. They're really good with the right perks, but in reality, they're not at the tip top, but then again, they're definitely not at the bottom. They hold their own, it's just a really good middle of the road weapon. And some players main them, Bygones comes to mind, Blast Perdition. They deal good flinch, very relaxed time to kill, there's a lot to like. In this review, I want to talk about a particular role that I have. It's one that I wish more weapons in Destiny 2 had, and as a matter of fact, I wish that this pulse rifle with this role or something similar could be available to everyone. I'm talking PvE and PvP players. There's a lot more to this game than straight damage dealing perks, and I hope to showcase that today. For some of you, it might not be your style, but for a lot of you, I think it can work really, really well. This is from players that are low level going into trials and higher level activities and Iron Banner, but also for the Sherpas that run players through trials, things like that. And this weapon with this role, I believe, if there was ever such a thing to classify a role, I believe it is one of the best support weapons in Destiny 2. Now there's also something I found with a perk that's never been talked about before, and it's something to know if it ever comes up again in PvE or PvP. As always, I'm going to go through what can roll on the weapon, and I'm going to end up on a particular perk and roll to talk about. Today's review is about a new Monarchy Pulse Rifle brought back, the Geon 7 Rifle. 390 RPM in the energy category as ARC, direct competition is going to be last perdition. Each one of these 390 pulses have very specific roles to them that are special. Bygones has Headseeker Kill Clip, Outlaw Kill Clip, that's kinetic. There are Rampage roles for it, things like that. In the energy, we have last perdition. It has Firmly Planted Kill Clip, Firmly Planted Rampage, or Rangefinder Kill Clip, Outlaw Kill Clip, and so on. Really good perk combos. The Geon 7 has a couple that are really special as well. For the base stats on the screen, all of them are in the middle of the road. None of them are a detriment to it. It does have one stat that stands out. That's its recoil direction stat of 80. Because the Geon 7 has scopes, not barrels. We'll get into that in a moment, but barrels can have big recoil direction changing perks, like Arrowhead Break as an example. For some weapons, those barrels are needed to help them to correct that recoil direction stat. Some of them almost need it. Even for mouse and keyboard, it helps there. Otherwise, you need to add on a counterbalance mod to make the recoil a little bit more straight. But with recoil direction, direction stat of 80, that's pretty good. At base, it's going to shoot fairly straight. It does drift a little bit to the right, but nothing out of control. It's going to shoot fairly true. That means you can go with the targeting adjuster, sprint grip, backup mag, rampage spec, dragonfly spec. We'll talk about those in a moment. There is also the option of the counterbalance mod to really clean it up, but you should be okay. I personally don't run a counterbalance mod on it. Since it has scopes, that grants zoom magnification as well as it gives bumps to select stats. There are nine options. Standouts are going to be short and medium zoom scopes. Medium zoom standouts are the SPO 57 front, 28 front, and 26 front. For the short zoom, we have the SL 10, 12, and 21 post. A lot of these are preference. I tend to want the 57 front for plus 14 to range. There are eight options for the magazine, ricochet rounds, plus 10 to stability, plus five to range, high cows for added flinch, and plus five to range. Pure mag options can work on certain rolls, so you kind of spec it out the best that you can. Onto the perks, on the screen is both nodes. There are some familiar faces. We have Full Auto, Zen Moment, Rangefinder. But there are a couple of gems in here and a couple of very unique, powerful combinations. A couple of standout perks are number one, Swashbuckler. There are only two pulses in the game with Swashbuckler, this and the Infinite Paths, and you can't get the Infinite Paths anymore, and that archetype for legendary weapons is struggling anyway. So Swashbuckler on a 390 can work a little bit better than that. And when looking to pair, anytime Grave Robber and Swashbuckler can be put together, it's automatically top tier, even on a primary weapon like a Pulse, because you can melee an enemy, refill the mag, get times 5 Swashbuckler, and start going to town and chaining it. You could also pair Firmly Planted with it, Full Auto. Any of them can really make it into a good Pulse Rifle. And looking at the other perk combos, you can just get a solid performing Pulse Rifle, Firmly Planted Rampage, Zen Moment Rangefinder, Zen Moment Dragonfly, Full Auto Dragonfly, and so on. And speaking of Dragonfly, there are only two current pulses that have it randomly rolled, the Premonition and this one. There are some older ones that you can't get anymore, like at Hortative, and some you can pull from collections, but only two with current random rolls. When you look at these perks, a lot of them are kind of covered by Last Perdition and Bygones. Some of you might have these rolls, and if not, if you get it, it's still going to be a good pulse because it has good recoil direction. You can come up with something good. So really be looking out for Swashbuckler if you get it. It's rare. But of this perk pool, the perk to really look at is Disruption Break. This is the only pulse rifle in Destiny 2 with Disruption Break, and remember what Disruption Break does. Breaking an enemy's shield with this weapon makes them vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. 
When you break a shield, any shield, you deal 50% more kinetic damage to them for 5 seconds. Important note, a lot of people don't know this, Disruption Break works in both PvE and PvP. When an enemy is debuffed, not only you, but anyone shooting a kinetic on them will deal 50% more damage. I want to walk through everything about this and what it means to have it on a weapon like a 390 Pulse. The role that I have, the one that you've been seeing, is Disruption Break Dragonfly. The full role is a long zoom 52 ocular, but I have the 26 front, so that's what I'm using. We have Ricochet Rounds or Flared Magwell, I'll go with Ricochet. And then of course, Disruption Break Dragonfly. I have on the Dragonfly spec for more damage and radius, and also a handling masterwork. A couple things about this particular role. Disruption Break is the main draw, but mine has Dragonfly. Dragonfly and Disruption Break work together. It only rolls on three weapons. This one, the Ringing Nail, and the Raid Scout, and the Noblesse. These two together can work, because if you were to Dragonfly an Add, a Thrall, a Drag, any enemy, if they explode and that explosion damage breaks a shield, that does count as disruption breaking it. You could be in PvE at mid-range, hitting your pulse shots, downing groups of adds that are together, clearing the area with Dragonfly. Disruption Break on this pulse can be paired with anything. Rampage, Swashbuckler, Rangefinder. This one's just showcasing Dragonfly. If you see a shielded enemy, you hit them, break the shield, they're debuffed. Because it's a pulse, you have range. This is just strike gameplay with random teammates. I'm clearing adds. When I see a shield, I pop it. If they have their kinetic out, they're gonna feel it. And on my end, I could have a trench barrel shotgun, a vorpal SMG, or sidearm. I could even be at a long distance versus higher tier enemies, I could break their shield and then bring out like an Izanagi for a four time shot. In higher level encounters, you can work as a team, I've done it in raids already. Dungeons. Anytime there's a shielded enemy, I'm the one that's going to break it, and a teammate has a times 4 Izanagi shot for him. Now that's a times 4 shot that's doing 50% more damage, it's huge damage. So for all around support in a team setting in PvE, it does great. If you're playing with a fire team, everyone has to be on board that you're going to be breaking the shields, but even if you're playing solo with, let's say, this pulse, you can break the shields of a major and then go right at them with a powerful kinetic and just delete them. But on to PvP, here's the interesting part. These have a .93 TTK, they're very relaxed, they create flinch. The pulse rifles live in that 30 plus meter range, 30 to 40. You're gonna see fall off in there towards the tail end of that. And when you're in that range, that's still really good versus hard light because hard light does have accuracy issues about 32 meters and longer. I found when you push hard light and other ARs into your space at 30 plus meters, you're gonna win. Again, this is the only pulse rifle in the game with disruption break. There are only four ranged options total. We have the Kindled Orchid, that Raid Noblesse, or Noblesse, the Ringing Nail, and this Geon 7. There's also Arbalest, but the thing about it is that for this range that I'm talking about, 30 to 45 meters, this 390 pulse is really the best at it, because you can do well in short range with it, mid range, and even into longer ranges. They do 31 to the head, 20 to the body, so in two bursts, you're going to be breaking the shields at some point. There are five important things as to why I love it so much on this pulse, and what's happening when you're using it. Number one, you use it normally as a 390 RPM. You're going to be looking just to win gunfights. Nothing changes. You just play normal. But that leads into the second thing. In a gunfight, if they back out low health, they're debuffed for five seconds, vulnerable to kinetic damage. They have what looks like the suppression symbol over them. If they pop back out or someone on your team has a line on them with the kinetic, they're melted. That's a really good thing because if they notice that they're debuffed, if they have that timer on their screen, they should have to wait. The third thing is that in a team shot setting, it gets things moving along. And here are various clips from a friend's point of view of it working. We're going to go from my point of view to their point of view. Scouts doing 101, hand cannons, the Memento Mori Ace doing 120 plus. I've had times where I get shots in, but I had to immediately back out to get my health back. But in that moment, I did break the shields. Meanwhile, my teammate had a line on them, getting that big damage into them. Many times during a gunfight, you can land clean shots, they back out, or you back out. And if they back out, let's say they have a high recovery stat, they're going to start recovering health. Or let's say a Wormhusk Hunter gets cracked, he shade steps, gets health, recovers. They might end up at full health, but they're still going to be on the tail end of that debuff timer. They can still be two shot with, let's say, a hand cannon. The fourth thing, even if you're in a 1v1 and you lose the gunfight, your opponent is leaving it being vulnerable to kinetic damage. So Think Trials, Survival, even in Quick Play. Quick Play 6v6 is like the worst, because if you're out in the open and you just want a gunfight and you have that timer on your screen, you better get out of sight. I've taken this Geon 7 Fallus, and yeah, there's been some cheeky Dragonfly explosions, and the Dragonfly explosion in PvP does 96 if you have on the spec, so it can break their shields and debuff the next person. But if I lost a gunfight, I would call out to my team, they would collapse on them, because when they're debuffed, it's 50% all around. Body shots on them are pretty much going to match what a headshot would have done, and the headshot damage with the multiplier is way higher than that. So when you think about it, I want to stress this here, and this is the fifth thing that I love about it. If you're a low light player, going into Iron Banner, going into Trials, or say you simply want to help, maybe you aren't the strongest 
PvP player. What happens most of the time, if you're running low light, going into Trials or Iron Banner, is that this pulse should be doing 31 to the head, but since you're low light, it might be doing 27, 26 to the head. In those cases, in a straight 1v1, you're probably not going to kill them, but you're at least going to break their shields, you will debuff them. So say you or maybe your Sherpa, someone's new to Trials, and you're taking them through. If they had access to this weapon, I would want them to use it. Because if they get shots in and they break shields, and even if they lose in a 1v1 and die, that enemy is debuffed, that could be huge. Again, let's say even if that enemy got their health fully back by Worm Husk, maybe a well, the timer's still on them, a high impact sniper does over 200 damage to the body when they're debuffed if you use a kinetic high impact sniper. To me, it's a perfect support weapon, like all around. It's a weapon that you put on and know that you're helping, even if you aren't the most PvP centered player. And I saw this season that there aren't that many damage dealing perks. I believe that these types of perks, the ones like Disruption Break, are just as good. You just have to know how to use them, what they're doing. And they really do double as being a great PvP and PvE option. It opens up a lot more. Like you, the user, say a super's coming at you. You can do enough to break their shields. You can actually watch it physically break. As they get closer, you switch to your kinetic shotgun and you can melt them 50% more damage on the pellets to a super. It has a lot of utility. And messing with the perk, I did find out something about it. It's something I know hasn't been talked about before. And at this current time, it's only for a special situation. For now, it's just kind of cool. I didn't know it, but Disruption Break stacks on itself. Like, it can get to a times seven, times eight. So on this Well Warlock, they're constantly getting shields. I'm constantly breaking them. Each time I'm breaking them, it's stacking all that debuff damage. I've one shot them with a single hand cannon shot out of a well. So as of now, it's kind of a novelty. Maybe you can do it to a Warlock in the Crucible, but if there's ever a boss that has a mechanic that makes you have to keep shooting them and they're constantly regening shields, or maybe it's just a damage phase where you need to keep damage on them as they're trying to recover shields. Remember that Disruption Break stacks on itself and it stacks so much, it's kind of comical. So in conclusion, I think that this is a gem weapon. At base, it's a great weapon. It has certain perks. They're gonna be good all around, but it's the only pulse that has Disruption Break. And it, again, it's just a perfect support for your team in PVE and PVP. That's gonna be up to the user though, if you find value in that. Sure, you're not up in an enemy's face with a shotgun using let's say one, two punch or trench barrel, whatever it is, or maybe using a sword, but you could be helping those players out that are doing that up in an enemy's face. I do wish more mid-range weapons had disruption break because if there were, I think that we would see a lot of them because I think it would get out what you're actually doing to enemy players. And as it sits right now, it's a rare thing. So be on the lookout for this pulse with disruption break. Because with a pulse, you do still have some peak shot capability. You can get off two clean bursts going in and out of cover, and you're going to be breaking shields a lot. Whereas something like an auto rifle needs a steady stream of bullets. I think it's a fantastic weapon. So let's talk about it down below. What do you think about the Geon 7? What roles do you have? How are you liking it? If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get videos right when they go live. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.